Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to another episode of NSC Finvest powered by CNBC TV 18 Season 3. Today we are at the headquarters in Pawai, Mumbai of one of India's leading IT global services provider, LNT Infotech. One of India's leading global IT services company, LNT Infotech, is ranked by NASCOM as the sixth largest software and services exporter from India. The IT giant provides end to end IT solutions and services to banking and financial services, insurance, engineering and construction, consumer packaged goods, retail and pharmaceuticals, and many more industries. NSC Finviz visited LNT Infotech in Poway with the country's finest experts to advise and educate the young employees on investments and financial planning. And we're now joined by our two very special guests. We have CA Harsh Rumta, who's a SEBI registered investment advisor with HarshRumta.com. And we have Firoz Aziz, who's the deputy CEO, Anand Rati Financial Services. Welcome, Harsh. Welcome, Firoz. And our core topic for today is mutual funds. Uh, so, Harsh, let's start off. Mutual funds. People find that very confusing at times. How is a mutual fund different from stocks or what we call equities? So I think uh, most people confuse uh, mutual funds with uh, equities and people assume that mutual funds means investment in equity. Uh, mutual fund is a method of investment. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of investors pool their money together, appoint a manager effectively and that manager invests based on whatever he has promised. Now that investment could be in debt instruments, that investment could be in equities, it could be in gold, hmm. very soon you might have real estate as well and also a mixture of that. It has to be pre-told uh, hmm. to the investors what is going to be the investment pattern. Okay. So the key of investment in uh, mutual funds so to say is using the principle of pooling hmm. and getting an expert help to okay. invest. I think. Irrespe irrespective of where you want to invest, mm -hmm. whether you want to invest in equity, even debt, mm -hmm. even gold, anything, mutual funds can be used for investment. Okay. So, Firoz, you know, there was a time when any ad you heard on television or on the radio about mutual funds, they'd have a disclaimer at the end which used to zip past. Now it's become a little slow, so you can actually hear them say mutual funds are subject to market risk. Please read the offer documents carefully before investing. What, so, what is this risk? Is it is it not a good idea to go and get into mutual funds if I'm risk averse, if I want to take low risk or is again there are options that I can take if I'm a high risk appetite person and I'm a low risk per appetite person. Can you tell us a little bit about that? See, I think, I think risk uh, is a very, very important term. See, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Risk to a common man is a very negative term but it's actually the most positive term. Hmm. Why? Because if everybody has different quantums of wealth, what distinguished is their risk taking capability. So risk if you take it in your stride and use it to your advantage. Now coming to the specific question of what are the risks in a mutual fund. People generally when they think of risk, one risk which they think of is that I give money to somebody and he goes belly up and he doesn't return my money. That risk which is the very large risk where you get all your money back or you got, get no money back that risk doesn't exist with mutual funds because it is the most structured format, transparent format that I give him money, he can't run away with my money. Okay, unlike some non-structured kind of lending and borrowing, right? So that's one big risk which is not there in a mutual fund because it's a, it's a trust which gets formed, which is a legal entity which all the people who own small portions of the mutual funds are beneficiaries. So that primary risk which people generally associate hmm. is not there. One other risk which exists is the price risk. See, the price of a mutual fund can go up and down. Right, which, which I think is a very small risk because price can go up and down but over a period it will eventually go up. Why? Because there is a very smart professional managing it. Right? So that risk is what that disclaimer speaks about and to my mind that's a significantly small risk 
because there are some risks in the world which correct themselves automatically. Like if you have a wound on your hand, it corrects itself automatically, right? But if you have cancer, it doesn't correct itself, right? Because there is no fighting mechanism in the, in the body. So lending to somebody and running away with the money, you give him 10 years, he's not going to come back and repay it to you. But a prize risk is the risk mm -hmm. and that's a very small risk relative to what is the risk perceived. Lauren says that when you say, you know, stay invested for the long term, what is the ideal time one should stay invested? So what is long term when you say long term? Okay. Yeah, that's, I think that's a lovely question, Lauren, because uh, I mean, there are two ways you can define uh, long term, you know, I mean, Mark Twain has said that in the long term, all of us are dead. So obviously, we're not defining that much of a long term. Uh, and you know when we do these uh, shows on television you have investor questions who says I am a, I am a long term investor then you ask him okay what do you mean by long term he says six months okay <laughs> so obviously six months isn't long term uh, if you look at equity right which is where I think this is very relevant and if you look at the past data see if you look at the data on nifty right if you look at the returns I think over 8 years, if you have invested money in the Nifty at any time post-1992, over 8 years, okay, you would never have got a negative return. You can pick a date after 1992 and if 8 years later you look at what the Nifty was, there wouldn't be a negative return, right? And to lot of investors, not having a negative return is extremely important, right? So. Uh, I would not say that that is the most important thing, but I think long term by this definition cannot be less than 8 to 10 years. So, I, I would define it based on past data, anything 8 to 10 years is long term, anything 5 years to 8, 9 years is medium term, anything less than 5 years is actually short term. I mean, I think that really is a key thing for people to internalize. Okay. Thanks. Uh, next question is by Kinjal Uday Shah. Kinjal. Right. Uh, Firoz, she says that what portion of the portfolio should be invested in mutual funds? If you look at uh, mutual funds currently, address three asset classes like when uh, Harsh mentioned, equity, debt and gold specifically. So mutual funds is nothing but professional management. To my mind, a person can use uh, mutual funds to get to most of the other assets except real estate. So, if you have 30% in real estate as an investment, not the house you are staying in, that's not considered a part of your investment because that's a consumption objective. So, if that's taken care and if there is no other real estate, 100% can be addressed by a mutual fund because there are close to 1000 plus schemes to cater to all people or all monies of everybody. So, 100% can be in mutual fund apart from real estate investment which you have. You are watching NSC Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 season 3. It's time for a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching NSC Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18, and today we're at the office of LNT Infotech. Uh, about seven years back, we had a great financial crash in the United States, uh, which was mainly because of derivatives trading and a lot of traders, you know, uh, misusing the rules, so to speak. Uh, how likely is that to happen with mutual funds? Uh, we know that there are regulatory authorities, but despite having regulatory authorities, there were some discrepancies and we had this uh, big crash. Like you rightly said, uh, Subodh, uh, that last time uh, in 2008, there was a lot of derivative. Now, the question is, what is a derivative? It's a, it's a little complex instrument, uh, which actually helps people speculate or also has other purposes, which are safety and stuff. But if people use derivative for speculation, <coughs> then you can actually bet very big. That's what some large financial institution did. And that's where there was a lot of financial crisis. Coming to how is that different than a mutual fund, that derivative positions in the US were predominantly speculative positions of the financial institutions, not somebody else's money. 
in a mutual fund you are managing a third party's money. If I am a professional for example managing somebody else's money and then there is a regulation on me that I am supposed to do it only with use derivatives only for a, for example in Indian context you can only use derivatives for hedging purposes. You can't use it for speculative purposes. You can't, there are so many do's and don'ts with respect to regulation specifically on derivatives on mutual funds. You can buy derivatives, you can buy options but can't sell options. Okay, so the point here is there they were taking speculative uh, positions on their own money especially on their proprietary money. Here they, there is somebody who is managing monies of somebody else with some, some regulator overseeing their uh, process and also in the ground rules it is clearly very clearly laid out and that gets checked and reported if not higher frequency at least on a monthly basis. So that risk of getting that done in a mutual fund is a very very low risk. My question is how does this mutual fund utilities and common account number works? The mutual, it is one of the ways in which you can uh, invest. So MF utilities is a, is a platform which has been uh, promoted by all the mutual fund companies together. Okay. okay, the idea is that once you get what is called a common account number from uh, the uh, MF utility, right? Uh, you will be able to invest across any schemes uh, at the uh, click of a, a button online. It helps you take you online, it helps you redeem uh, online. You can change, suppose your bank accounts change. If you change that at one place, automatically it will get linked to all your existing investments as well as uh, new investments. It is a way of making your investments convenient, faster lower cost. I think those are the three things. Uh, so that is one platform. There are other platforms which offer uh, similar uh, facilities. So I mean it is one of the platforms that have uh, sprung up uh, recently to help investors do their investments cheaply and uh, conveniently and at a lower cost. On that note it is time for a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome back. You are watching NSE Finviz powered by CNBC TV 18 and I have two very special guests, Harsh Rumka and Firoz Aziz. Harsh, I want to talk to you about gold. Uh, people are still curious about gold. Is it a good option? E-gold, not e-gold? How? I mean basically yes, is it a good idea to buy gold now or has it reached its peak and it is not going to go up much now? What is your view on that? I think before I answer that, I think it is what is in order is what is gold? And I think there are a lot of, uh, although at the risk of sounding sexist, there are a lot of women in the audience, investing in jewellery is not good, okay. Because when you take the jewellery out of the showroom, 30% is gone. You take it out of the showroom, maybe 20 is gone, depending on where you buy it from. So, it's, that is not clearly gold. So, if at all we are talking comparison, when you say you are investing in gold, physical gold would be say be a a coin or a bar that is gold versus buying it electronically, buying a, uh, buy, investing in an ETF or a gold fund or uh, uh, buying some other versions of gold. I think as far as gold is concerned, we have these two schemes on the anvil uh, or as far as for fresh investment, it is really going to be the gold bond scheme right. and I think from the looks of it, more details are clearly awaited. But I think from the looks of it, the gold bond scheme clearly mm. is going to be fairly attractive. I think okay. uh, the fear that I have is that it will be too attractive. My question is considering that uh, gold has given negative returns in last two years mm. and due to China crisis, it is expected that future will also be uncertain. So do you still build, uh, suggest to invest in gold ETFs? If I yes, then what should be a percentage? So I think uh, any any asset class there needs to be a balance. You know you cannot look at last what has happened over the last two years and three years and keep shifting your investment strategy. I think you need to plan your overall investment strategy. And I think when you plan your overall investment strategy, gold will always have a part. Okay, as long as it has a part that is commensurate with your needs, 
so typically i think uh, for any client we would say 5% to 15% of your portfolio should be in gold that's one second it should not be built one time you should not just pay money and you know take that etf at one time like equity because gold prices are volatile like equity we recommend that you should buy systematically over a period of time similarly gold should be bought systematically over a period of time so you don't really need to worry about the china crisis or whatever i mean the idea is that when you invest systematically you insulate yourself from a lot of noise as long as you are doing it over a period of time yeah my question is uh, that is how to build a mutual fund portfolio that is how much uh, i should invest in balanced how much i should invest in equity mutual funds fixed income first okay. yeah see before you that's practically the last step of your financial planning it is not the first step first you need to see what are the goals i have which i want these financial instruments to meet that is the first step there are two types of goals one which you have to meet there are some goals which you can do without meeting in a lifetime doing a world tour might not be the most necessary thing but getting your child educated getting him married if required getting your retirement corpus in place all those are need to have kind of goals so first laying down your goals is the first step before you get to mutual funds after you do that factor in for price rise which is also called inflation because money value depreciates significantly so the next step is inflation to put things in perspective 30 years back whatever 100 rupees you had is just worth 6 rupees today so 95% of the value of the 100 rupee note has now become 6 rupees so first step is goals second step is factor in price rise third step is choosing the right instrument or the pathway which will help you beat your goal when you finish these two successfully and deliberated and introspected significantly on these and there's huge attention to be given on those once you have a freeze on that then you move to the third logical step of creating a portfolio to do what is the most important question if that is answered now coming to for example if you have goals which are long term your portfolio should ideally be skewed towards equity because equity is one of the two asset classes which over long periods of time can beat price rise and do better than inflation okay so then you at least should have 70 to 80% of your money in equity okay if those are long term goals and about 20% in debt instruments and some degree of gold if you if you have a uh, allocation which needs to be given so in the mutual fund category you need to have uh gold debt and equity all in the mutual fund basket out of which you can you can actually buy golds also as a gold fund thank you so much harsh for being here thank you for also being here thank you so much for having us here this um, basically uh, in the mutual fund section uh, where uh, of course my knowledge was very limited uh, the basic factors of evaluation is something that i have learned from you and one important thing which i am going to take away from you is uh, investing in my retirement plan the show was wonderful uh, we have we got good answers they covered all the possible topics and yeah it was really useful really useful tips from the experts and i like the way they uh, got a 360 degree view of the mutual fund industry before attending the show i myself did not know much about mutual funds at all uh and now just 2 minutes back i was guiding someone who couldn't attend the show uh, about mutual funds so fantastic the answers are very crisp which uh, are seldomly found like you know the the answers to the queries very crisp too good well that's all on this episode of nsc finwiz powered by cnbc tv 18 season 3 but before we go here's a chance for you to tell us how much you've learned on the episode A person who's interested in stable and diversified investments can grow his or her savings by investing in which asset class? Shares, gold, mutual funds, all of the above. Send in your answers on fwq at network18online.com. So be sure to send in your answers to the viewer question. Until next week from the entire team, many thanks for watching. Focus. Ideation. 
Innovate. Enable. 